this is really, really helpful and something that you could look at kind of every morning. Um, it's GM Digest. So it just shows you the, like we've picked the best uh, market news for you to then look through. So each one links to the story or sometimes we have the videos there or like podcasts or anything like that. So this is a good example, actually. Uh, we have this Bloomberg podcast. So if you right click on this, you could then go and watch that, which is really, really helpful. Um, and what we wanted to cover, because I don't think we've gone over it too much for Nats and Light, is we will firstly start with Eve Tracker, because I've used this quite a lot. Um, so <clears throat> here we start off and it shows you the Eve balances on exchanges, uh, which is pretty interesting to see like the most liquid exchanges. Uh, I think we covered this last week uh, in terms of the exchange flow. So how much is going out of exchanges and into exchanges. Uh, and we now have this balance line as well uh, to show the balance on exchanges as well. So you can see that that's been going down for a while. Um, and then this part here, contracts deployed each month. This part uh, we can cover, but because we're lacking time, I'm going to go to the part that's probably most interesting to everyone um is top transactions so this is really helpful it just shows you the top uh transactions of eth each week so last seven days um here you can see there was this huge transaction i think it was on twitter from binance to binance um and it's a good example actually because i got um tagged in it saying like uh who is the transaction to because people saw it was moving from binance but they didn't know uh what the second wallet was so if you were on that and light, you could quickly go on there and you could see, okay, it's just movement from Binance to Binance. Um, and then from this table, why it's so helpful is what you can do is filter by time uh, to then see like the most recent um, large ETH transactions. So here there's some transaction from an unknown wallet that we don't have labeled um, into the Arbitrum inbox, which I personally don't know what that is. Um, but it's kind of interesting. Uh, and then you could explore that. Uh, and then you see a lot of exchange transactions going on, Genesis trading. And basically, you can just comb through and have a look, like, are there any that stand out as kind of unique or interesting? Um, so it's a really helpful table to kind of see whale movements, I guess. It will be both exchanges and entities. Um, so here we can see FTX movement of 1200 which is like 1.5 million or something like that maybe 2 million now um from ftx to jump which is kind of interesting uh and a good example and you can see even on nansen light as well we have like the smart money ones labeled which is pretty amazing uh here is a very interesting one andy j i don't know who this is um 2000 eth onto stargate which is pretty interesting, TradFi Whale. So basically you can go through, have a look, uh, and you can also then filter by volume, which I think is what we had at the start. Yeah, to show you the largest transaction. So if you're interested in what's going on now, you can filter by time. If you're interested in just like, what are the largest movements, um, you can filter by volume. So this one is quite interesting here. Um, similar to that, we have the top volume addresses. So these addresses are like the most active in terms of sending and receiving ETH um, in the last seven days. So again, you can do very similar things. See, like filter by the various columns that we've got here uh, and see if any stand out as unusual. So jump here again, uh, 47,000 ETH received and sent. So yeah, you just need to kind of scroll through what ones are interesting. I see this wallet stand out uh, quite a lot, one to kind of look into. Um, and yeah, at the bottom here, we just have like a quick uh, top 15 of the highest ETH uh, balances. So this one was actually recent again, sorry, jump uh, of like 2 million ETH into one wallet. Um, I think it's worth like billions of dollars or something. And you can see here as well, the all the ETH that's in the ETH 2.0 uh, contract. So that's it for ETH tracker. All of it is completely free, which is pretty amazing. Um, you just need to sign up, like I said, Nance and Light. Uh, and now we're going to look at Stablecoin Master. So 
here um, is like all the details that you need on all stable coins. Uh, and why that's really useful is, so here is like for the wallets that we have labeled for exchanges, the balances they've got, net exchange flow, um, similar to this table here. We can again look at uh, balance changes again. So you can see what ones have gone down a lot. So this movement of 1.8 is from that Binance wallet. Um, Genesis trading, adding 200 million, all of this. So these are things you can look through. Uh, you can see the jump trading Binance deposit has had an increase of $93 million uh, added to that. And similar to the ETH tracker, uh, we have this large stablecoin transactions table. So this is really amazing because it includes all uh, stable coins just in one table, which is super helpful. Um, here, I don't actually know why this is always the case, but Arrakis always do really large transactions like constantly. But again, you can filter by time to maybe see uh, some kind of different wallets. So here, Smart Dex Trader um, to Uniswap, 16 million, and then taking it out as well. So it's all a case of like going through here, seeing if there's anything that stands out as unusual or stands out as very interesting or something that might influence the market. Um, amber to amber. So yeah, you just need to take your time and kind of go through. Uh, if you're interested as well, I should say, in like what these emojis mean, we have an article on our website under guides uh, that kind of gives you an explanation of all the different emojis. Um, and yeah. Stablecoin balances, including all stablecoins here. All of this for free. Highest volume, very similar, like the ETH tracker. Um, Stablecoin flow, which is pretty cool. Um, so that includes all transactions between like one wallet to another. So you can see here, I, do you know what this is about, Nelson? Maybe I'll be surprised if you do. I don't know, but 53 billion in I volume. <laughs> I think it, I think it might be some kind of new aggregator or something. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's kind of weird, but yeah, like I said, Arrakis moved tons of money. Um, I'm not ent entirely sure why. Um, but yeah, you go through these in the same kind of way. Um, so that is Stablecoin Master. I'm sorry if I'm going like relatively fast. Um, it's because we're trying to cover everything. Um, if this wants to load. I think one one good use yeah. case by looking at this stablecoin is definitely looking at transactions of stablecoin to exchanges, especially centralized exchanges, mm -hmm. right? Because that I, I think I think it really boils down to two reasons why they move it to to exchange, right? One is to to off ramp, right, convert it to fiat, and the other is they are they are ready to to convert it to to some other other assets, basically going risk on. Mm -hmm. right, so I, I think I think once you see that transaction, probably what it can do is set a smart alert on that particular entity to see if they receive any any other tokens right after this transaction that you exported. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we'll cover smart alerts maybe later as part of the other plans. Someone says um, the Arbitrum inbox is just the bridge to Arbitrum. So that's quite an interesting transaction and the one that we looked at earlier. So I'm, I think that was for ETH. Um, so someone is obviously bridging like a load of ETH over to Arbitrum. Um, so these things are kind of interesting. Um, okay, so now for the sake of time, we're gonna quickly move on to NFT data that we have. So the first thing for NFTs that you have on Nansen Light, again, for free, um, is the market overview. So here it just kind of gives you some more details on like the top collections at the moment. Um, like I said before on the homepage, Board eights, 500 ETH. Um, you can see the floor change for three day, 24 hours. You can also change these uh, time frames, um, <clears throat> and kind of go through the same ones and like see what's interesting. Uh, one thing, if we can do it here, that is quite a cool thing you can do with this um, is see the average price, so the average entries into all of these collections. Um, which is relevant at the moment, especially as like some collections are going down a fair bit. So then you can kind of see what is like the average entry into these collections. And then if we're like closing in on that price, you might then see like more selling going on. 
because people want to like recoup what they've put in. So even now, like Azuki's average entry is 8.8, .8, and now they're under that. Same for Clonex um, and things like this. So Moonbirds is like just above the average entry. Um, and I put a tweet out yesterday of like Bored Apes, the sellers at the moment seem to be like early buyers. Um, but you can still see that the average entry into board apes is 25. So you're still quite a fair bit off that. Um, but yeah, once you get close to that, it seems like a bit more worrying um, to me. So it's quite a helpful table to look at. Okay, uh, next one. I need to speed through is trends and indexes. So this one just gives you an overview of the whole market um, for NFTs. So we include all marketplaces here and you can filter individually, which I'm not going to do at the moment, um, by the different marketplaces. So you can see last week uh, we had like quite very low volume, um, most of it by OpenSea. And yeah, you can kind of look through which marketplaces are doing well. Um, users are still like remaining relatively stable. They're not seeing big decreases. Transactions are like tiny bit up even in the last couple of weeks um buys you could look at this one is really helpful um so it just shows you the recent sweeps of nfts so any so if we see here i have no idea what this collection is um but someone's swept 41 uh, so then you might feel like okay if they're sweeping 41 it might be something i want to look at um i always feel like if they're spending more um that's almost more important than how many they're sweeping um because if you've got more money in the game, I guess, uh, you probably feel that you have higher conviction. Um, so like something like this, 24, but for almost no money, it's not as good of a sign to me. Um, but also what's relevant is if you go through each page and then see the same thing popping up a lot. So actually this Bob's collection uh, is coming up a fair bit. Then you might be like, okay, I should probably look at Bob's. Yeah, Bob's is coming up a lot, actually. So here you'd be like, let me see if I want to buy one, especially if they're cheap, maybe it's worth the risk. Um, same thing for these pudgy dick butts. You might feel like you want one. I don't know why you'd want one, but they might go up. Uh, so yeah, you could have a look at them. Def girl, no idea. So that's a kind of process that you'd go through, uh, see if there's a lot coming up. Is there a lot being spent on them? Because maybe that's a good sign like this one. Uh, and yeah, you can kind of see through there. This one just shows you the kind of top expensive purchases in the last 24 hours. So as always, a lot of board apes um, going on. Women ape yacht club. It's interesting. Might be wash trading. I don't know. Um, and yeah. Finalia, Pudgy Penguins, Moonbirds, all of this. So you can see what um, collections are doing well at the moment. Um, okay, we're going to rush through to NFT God mode. So if I pick a collection quickly, let's do uh, Bored Apes. Okay. I like how un after your nice yeah. and unsupervised with Justin Sun, 0.05 ETH is now almost nothing to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just a small purchase, uh, 200 million. <laughs> uh, but yeah, okay. NFT God mode. So what you have here is just like the overview of whatever NFT collection you're interested in. Um, so of course, the important data of like floor, volume, supply. Uh, you can look at the chart in different time frames. Uh, if we go all here. So yeah, this is kind of interesting as always for that type of data. Um, 24 hour average price, all of this. This one is really cool and kind of amazing that it's free. Um, so it shows you the smart money buys for any collection. This is like particularly important if you've got a new collection as well, because then you can kind of go through um, and see, should I buy this like new mint or whatever? Is there any smart money buying it? Um, or is it all just, when it says common buys, it feels harsh, like we're all just common compared to them. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if there's all just like common buys, uh, maybe it's less interesting to you. Um, but yeah, so these yellow dots, of course, are the smart money ones. So you can see for Bored Apes, there hasn't really been much smart money buying at all. 
um, since the end of July even. Uh, and even then, there's not that much. Uh, most of it was happening back in May. Um, and yeah, we can see transactions. You can see they're way down compared to what they were um, in mid-June. And we've got some info there. So yeah, that is pretty much it. Um, well, that isn't it for Nancy Light, but those are the things that I thought I'd highlight today. Um,